Vinland Saga, Season 2, Episode 12. Oh no. <laughs> it was a toll for lost love. Omar had a big episode 11. Oh no. And everyone knows the legend of the pig is, is spreading. Dead, drunk, or just depressed? And Omar will take care of the rest of the disaster himself. <laughs> This guy looks trustworthy. Something about his hood and face shrouded in shadow gives me the vibe that I can trust him completely. Definitely not. And jingling coins in his hand. Definitely not enacting a plan for an evil king. Oh my god! That was totally unnecessary. I have so many questions. Did he practice that? <laughs> like, how did he get so good at flinging coins? This is very, very specific as a skill. Omar, your day is, has come. Your day has arrived. Congratulations. You are the, the new central point of the story, just like you wanted. When your arc is just to bumble around and be a laughing stock and create disaster, somehow I, I doubt Omar is going to get the sympathetic and heroic arc treatment. Poor Omar. He's just a spo spoiled boy with big dreams. <laughs> He might, he might just be, be dead. Maybe it's for the best. You can just tell how much he's enjoying this. This guy's so... Wow, he's uh, really hamming it up. They're relishing the sweetness. Damn, he got the I on his report card. Or N. <laughs> oh, he, he, he couldn't help himself. The intrusive thoughts won. He was so close. Well, if we're doing it, we'll do it all the way. Just go all in. Oh no. Omar, no! Don't fall into their canoe's trap. Oh, he's gonna... Okay, I think I see the plan now. He's gonna lash out, and then family will be in Knut's debt. Hey, there's one-two punch there from his henchmen. Can he get his sword out of his sheath a third time? <laughs> Foreshadowing. Maybe, I don't know. Rumor has it. Omar can't even cut a pig. He did it! Character growth. That actually looked like not a half bad swing. Oh, and he's fighting while crying. Crying sword fight. Omar's trademark. Thorgil? I don't know, it's a sword fight. Anything could happen. People can die. When Omar fights, all opponents just look like Asklad. Probably kill Omar with a coin. Can't help but feel bad for him. It hurts. I also feel really bad for Thorgil. You did a pretty good job of that yourself. Oh! I mean, uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> to give him the maximum amount of sympathy possible, it seems like he's been super sheltered. He's frustrated. People like Olmar do this to mask a deep feeling of inadequacy. If you feel strong, you don't need to prove your strength every five seconds to everyone who glances at you wrong. I actually think what he could use is an actual strong father figure. You can kind of tell something about the dynamic of the family with the relationship of the father and the two brothers. Thorgil was just born this animal, or he managed to develop that way. With Olmar, it seems like Kettle was maybe just exhausted, and maybe treated him with fewer expectations, or maybe with a certain amount of fear after the experience with Thorgil. And also, Olmar's living in Thorgil's shadow, right? He has to hear about his big brother doing all these great heroic things while he's just sitting around on the farm. <laughs> or he could just cry more. <laughs> there we go, back in this warrior narrative. 
侮辱をそのままにして生きることだけはこのトールギルが許さん。This is terrible advice, but I also feel like this tone is what he needs. Some tough love. おいを出せ。腹に力を入れろ。はあ。もっと。はあ。想像しろ。Meanwhile, Knut sits comfortable on his throne. Doesn't even need to be here. The coin flip makes a return. Oh, this is really tragic for Omar. Also, continue to be impressed by the coin guy. He definitely practiced that. Oof, and that Omer gets respect for this. Definitely be careful what you ask for situation. Who's laughing now? <laughs> so much for not getting enough on him. But Thorgil's standing right there, so this is this is a wrap. He's just bloodthirsty, he just likes it. Meanwhile, Knut sits comfortably on his throne. Wow, that was a two-air combo. Aerial combo. Congratulations, you are now a hero. And your brother's being extra heroic. Superhero. I continue to be really curious what total role Thorgil's gonna play. The, the contrast in, in their actions and faces is, tells the whole story. It's a great shot. And this is his biggest fear. This is going to cost me a lot of farmland. <laughs> he was going to join the fight. The second he heard there was a fight while he was eating his chicken. Oh, but leaders will care selectively about the law. Nothing to see here, just a man losing his entire estate. Oh yeah, and people died. Yeah. Now I see. <laughs> this is becoming clear where Thorgal's character is going. Damn. Whoa! That was badass. This dude, I severely underestimated him. I thought he was just, you know, your standard Norse warrior. He's one of the greats in the show so far. How big is your guard cohort? How much do you love your job? Kettle's just watching his entire life unravel before his eyes. Yes, indeed. Thorgal lives free. He's smart, too. I severely underestimated him. Which means he was basically sending his brother off to die. <laughs> I don't like Thorgal, but I kind of like him. He's the wild card. He's like one thing standing in between this plot. Seems Knut's error was being too forthcoming about the total plan. You were successful. Yep. Yep. Realization sets in. Who is this man? <laughs> <laughs> He's alive. He's been waiting for purpose. He's a beast. Omar was looking for the, the narrative spotlight and Thorgal just took it. But Knut... Okay, he gets the land anyway. Or he's gonna try. But this, this means force. This means war on the, on the land. They're gonna fortify. Bro, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> He cut a guy's fingers off and then caught the sword and then killed another guy. Speaking of foregone conclusions. Sending Floki. Another connection. We 
Wow, Canoe's personally going. It's all got it. Oh, this is really coming together, even bigger than I thought. This is all getting pushed to a head with, like, all of the remaining characters. And Canute only knows some of the story, he doesn't know... Oh, hello. Hi. He just does this now, regularly. <laughs> Speaking of surpassing your father, too. That's a thing for both Thorfinn and Canute, just different, different ways. This is us being peaceful, creating a peaceful world. <laughs> Leaf smuggles them. Alright, <laughs> that's the real, the real mission here. He was free anyway. This is Kettle's worst fear come to pass. For a man with that much natural anxiety, he knew, always knew, how precarious and fragile his position was. He knows he's a target. He was just banking on the king's favor, but that's not an ideal situation when your whole life, everything you've built, your safety, relies on the whim of one person, especially when you know you're on their radar, you know, he's got a lot. The bigger you get, the more of a target you are. Snake and the warriors on the island, you know, they almost feel like a token just to ward off minor bandits, etc. But this is just absolute doomsday. And not to be cynical, you know, I think the law of the land has been hard fought and crafted for noble means, but there's not as much firm reality to it as it's easy to believe, you know, that it's like this static thing that exists kind of on its own. It's all just held up by people. And if the law of the land wants you bad enough, the, the law will bend to get you. I think it's possible that there's a, a little bit of status quoism or nor maybe normalcy bias is what it's called when because things are in a relative state of safety and regulation that it has more power than it actually does when the tides could change pretty quick you know if power consolidates a little too much or if sentiment changes a little bit too much there's a tipping point and then it's just you against the world which is a pretty crazy notion maybe almar can have a good arc you know maybe this is a wake-up call realization for him and now also he has a purpose to actually be a warrior instead of just lashing out at the world now it's time to defend homeland Einar and Thorfinn, enjoy your your days of farming. This is the end of a beautiful era. And Thorfinn smells something coming, maybe. Thorfinn's been tested a lot, and this might actually be his biggest test. Is he still convicted in that? Oh, that's a throwback. That's a callback. Man, that conversation with the priest just keeps on delivering. Whoa, that was an insane episode. Even seeing it coming, even seeing the, the threads start to weave together. Ooh, it's done in such a great way. I think the biggest surprise for me this episode is Thorgil. Thorgil is just a madman. Like, we knew he was that kind of warrior, right? But he, he backs it up and goes beyond. He has the strength to create his own morality, in a sense. If you know what I mean. He's gonna do what he wants until he dies. And isolating that element of his character. You know, I respect it. What he is is not fake. It's thrilling. This episode gave me chills. It's so interesting for Thorfinn, too. His home is coming under attack. He's probably going to be lumped in with just inhabitants of the island. He's going to meet Canute, who obviously does not give a crap about killing people, but he's made this vow. He's made this vow of pacifism. I think the challenge for making that satisfactory, the challenge for making it great and noble and heroic is that he sticks to his ideals, right? He's Okay, you decided to be a pacifist. Do you know what that means? Do you know that that means you are taking away one of the most important tools for effecting things you want to happen and for protecting people, for not just being a corpse, you know, not just being a body in the way. Can you uphold your ideals of pacifism and also uphold all other ideals? Protection of life, affecting positive change, or is it the kind of pacifism where you just leave, right? And you let other people who are willing to fight die. That's the real challenge. Pacifism sounds great on paper. I mean, I mean, everyone is a pacifist on some level, or not everyone, but most people. It doesn't really mean anything until you're threatened. It doesn't mean anything until your, your life's in danger or other people's lives are in danger. This is the argument for a certain character in Attack on Titan that I actually sympathize with. It's that peace is a great ideal, and most people probably want peace, 
but what is your recourse? What do you do against other people who are determined to not be peaceful and to take what you have and harm you? Obviously, I think that certain characters in that show take it too far, but that challenge is real. A challenge remains. I believe it's possible. I just think it's like the hardest. You know, that's way up there. In summary, this episode gave me what I expected and so much more. I mean, I mentioned Thorgil. It also makes me really curious to see what happens with Olmar. I'm curious to see Leaf's impact. He's peaceful, but as episode one established, he's a warrior himself, just in a different way. What happens to Kettle's anxiety? How good is Snake really? I suspect Snake is a closet badass. We've seen him compared to the Asclad, which is no small praise. How does Einar react? What happens to their bro ship in the midst of war? So many questions. I'm just so excited for the second half of this, this season.